If you know the song, uh, Oh When the Saints Come Marching In. Yeah. If you know the song, Swing Low Sweet Chariot. And then there's a little song also called uh, I'm Gonna Sing, Sing, Sing. And if you know those three, you can join, join us in our warm-up. Right? So we'll do all three to start with. We'll start with I oh, When the Saints. conducted by Dave Harris, who will present a, a, about a 30-minute program of song. The choir rehearses in this very room every Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m. After that, we will eat, uh, but save some room for some lasagna, which is being delivered about 6 o'clock. 
And, um, and then uh, I will give a, a short summing up of my life um, and also a song or two from the Working Voices Choir. So this, that's the general order of things. So here we go with okay. Mackie Screen. That's it. Back in line. Thank you very much. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to sing a little song now called Oye la Musica, uh, which is half in English and half in Spanish. Um, it's a bit of a pop, so I hope you enjoy it. Let's go, let's go over it. How are you happy? Hold the music up behind my friends. <laughs>
I'm now for the policeman. It's uh, sympathetic to the difficulties that the police have. This comes from the Pirates of Penzance. <coughs> and I hope I can sing it, given, uh, given a bit of horse. <coughs> <coughs> When a felon's not engaged in his employment, his employment, or maturing his felon, his little plan, his little, little plan, plan, his capacity for innocent enjoyment, and his enjoyment, enjoyment is just as great as any honest man, honest man, our oh, feeling we with difficulty smother, smother, when constabulary duties to be done, to be done, I'll take one consideration with another, with another. Policeman's lot is not a nappy one. Oh, when constabulary duties to be done, to be done, a policeman's lot is not a happy one. Enterprising burglars, not a burglary. Not, not a burglary. The cat Frank isn't occupied in crime. I in crime. He loves to hear the little brook a gurgling brook a gurgling. And listen to the merry village chime. Village chime. When the coster's finished jumping on his mother. On his mother. He loves to lie a basking in the sun. In the sun. I'll take one consideration with another. With another. Is not an happy one. Oh, vocabulary oh, duties to be done, to be done. A policeman's heart is not a happy one.
think we'll have to go quickly. That was way over five minutes. Uh, <laughs> for goodness sake. All right, so um, we've got a sea chanting or a sort of a pirate song or a wailing song now called Wellerman. Uh, if you know it, please join in. Wellerman, Wellerman, Wellerman. We've got verse one solo by Margaret. And then the groups will take turns. And then right at the end, there'll be a solo by our very own Stephen. Um, Wellerman. Sadly, we don't have Clint here tonight, so you're stuck with me. <coughs> <coughs> Hi, 
I talk to the trees, but they don't listen to me. I talk to the stars, but they never hear me. The breeze hasn't time to stop and hear what I say. I talk to them all. Thank you. 
lasagna. And um, after about half an hour, I guess, you know, what does a person say to uh, friends when they're eating? Well, what I sat down and wrote. So, um, here we go. An 80th birthday is a significant milestone. For those who travel overseas, they will see this age reflected in the increased cost of travel insurance. <laughs> it is also reflected in the ongoing breakdown of bodily systems as the various parts wear out. Unsightly sun damage continues its march, eyes get dry, joints ache rather than smoke, Toes itch unaccountably, and the daily pill intake has to be managed. I no longer ride my bicycle for fear of falling and fracturing a bones. The 80th is also an unpleasant reminder of that appointment we all have to face one day. The dark valley that we will need to cross. Some of you may come to my funeral, unless I go to yours. <laughs> tonight we uh, tonight you have the guest of honor alive. But remember this moment on that inevitable future day. <clears throat> I guess mine is an ordinary life, just one of a million, million others, but lucky to live in a good country like Australia. Okay, up front I have not had any of my own children, that I know about at least. This can make a big difference financially and lead to a more indulgent life. So I've seen the um, opera at uh, Bayreuth, Lionborn. I've stood on the top of the World Trade Center, but well, I guess everyone else here has done that as well. I've been to Rio. I've cycled to Romantische Straße, blah, blah, blah. And now, no grandchildren, having no grandchildren does free up a lot of time and energy. One acquaintance, I know, has 15. So I have to live with that absence. I'm, in, I'm at peace about that. And as a teacher, I did get to meet and work with a lot of young folk. I just got older, but they all stayed the same. <laughs> I didn't marry until I was 46, so that partly explains the parenting outcome. But I was saved from eternal bachelorhood by my dear Susan, who, against all current wisdom, thought I still had some potential. <laughs> I'm very glad to continue to experience the closeness of a spouse, a person who is with you on the journey, someone who has your back, who knows you so well, there's no secret. And in that decision, I inherited a stepson, Matthew. Hello, Matthew. Hi, mate. Matthew has introduced, has introduced me to the world of disability. It can be a surprisingly cheerful and positive world. Laughter is often heard, but this is not to deny that Matthew also has a hard life, which none of us would wish on him. But there are systems in place to ameliorate the burden and we acknowledge the generosity that we have received from government. <coughs> I chose teaching as a career. This was initially to get a university education. Yes, I did enjoy writing on a blackboard, but I did end up with a five-year bond to the WA Education Department. <laughs> Teacher training is a funny expression. Yes, we did have one lecture on how to write on the blackboard. And in the uh, Diploma of Education, we studied the philosophy of, philosophy, philosophy of education, where we learned to write essays explaining the logical difference between to know that and to understand this. But the topic of classroom management was never adequately discussed. I noticed that recently, 60 years too late for me, the federal government is wanting the universities to completely revise their teacher training methods. It was a revelation to me when I moved from <coughs> secondary teaching to TAFE teaching. In TAFE, 
There is no classroom management issues because the students choose to be there. I have found my niche. Of course, we never learned that at secondary college teaching. When the bond was completed, I went to the UK to study and travel. In London, a secondary teaching, like here, was not a popular job, so I had no trouble getting appointed as head of science at a girls' grammar school, just around the corner from the Oval Cricket Ground, and nearby was Oval House. Has anyone been there, Oval House? Um, a very interesting arts and theatre complex that I often enjoyed visiting. Now, I did try several further education lecturing positions. That's the English equivalent to take. When I applied for a physics position at a college training musical instrument makers, I thought I was assuring. I had an honours degree in physics and some interest and experience in music through singing. Okay. There were ten of us on the interview list. All had honours degrees in physics. Some played musical instruments and five had PhDs. <laughs> I, was a, I realised I was a very, very small fish in a very, very big pond. Six years went by, time to return to Oz. The good old WA Education Department remembered me. Well, they had trained me at great cost. And on the strength of one aerogram letter, offered me a permanent position in TAFE, and where I had an enjoyable teaching career. My job titles included Lecturer C, then Lecturer B, then Lecturer A, <laughs> Education Officer 1, Acting Senior Lecturer, and finished as an Advanced, schools, advanced Skills Lecturer 2. <laughs> One of the benefits of a career in TAFE, compared with a university academic position, was that there was, I thought, more energy and time left for extracurricular activities. So over my working life, I was able to pursue my interest in music and the theatre. This included a number of productions with the Gilbert and Sullivan's Society, as well as chorus work with the WA Opera Company. At the age of 65, I was offered the first of six short teaching contracts to Chongqing, China. This was sometimes eight weeks of teaching, which is a very long time when you're in that situation. Usually subjects like help desk procedures, occupational health and safety, or intellectual property uh, policies. I'm not in IT, but um, these were the subjects that my colleagues didn't really want to teach over there, or my Chinese counterparts. Then, when the teaching was done, three or week, we had three or four weeks at my own expense, <coughs> travelling around China. Susan came on all of the six trips, and we came to love the Chinese people and their food and culture. And we are still in contact with one couple from this time. At 69, I retired. So, the past 11 years of retirement have been Good years for Susan and myself. We've done home exchanges with Croydon, Nebworth, Hebden Bridge in Yorkshire, San Francisco and Prague. In fact, we came across one couple who were serial home exchangers. So they would, on their schedule, uh, they showed me the spreadsheet. It sort of covered um, a couple of years, I think. So there was two months in New York and then off to two weeks in Paris and then a month in Sydney and so on. <coughs> And if you, obviously they worked online, and so that's how they did it. But of course, zero flexibility in fitting in without schedule. So we've sung in choirs, you heard one of them tonight, at festivals and protests. You'll hear another choir in a moment, a protest choir. Uh, we've done road trips in various caravans and motorhomes. We went to our third iteration of a motorhome. And um, if you want to have a reason to spend money? Get yourself a motor. <laughs> <laughs> There's always something wrong with it. <laughs> so we drove around uh, Australia last year, crossing the Great Divide four times, so that's a really nice memory to have. So I asked the question, is 80 the new 70? Yes. <laughs> yes. So this is my life so far. So shall we meet on the 90th? Yes! yes. yes. Thank you very much.
good hints of how to put in your submission it only has to be very short to ask for a proper full assessment by the EPA. It's the first time they've ever agreed to consider this for mining in the northern Java Forest. Thank you. So this is um, uh, a text about uh, the union movement uh, set to a, tune, a, a very well-known Welsh hymn, uh, Chai Cumbria, is it? Oh, it's been well-known, but no, it's been well-known. Is it? Or is it um, a Christmas carol? And you'll find it's a Christmas carol. <laughs> <laughs> Too many things to think about today. So I'll give you a D, I think. Is that how we start? <laughs> uh, in faded photo, like a dream. In faded photo, like a dream, a locomotive on the street rolls with the ranks of marching feet, and you.
This is um, do it now. We need to wake up. We need to wise up. We need to open our eyes to it now.